What makes countries more competitive than others? This question has been on the minds of policymakers, researchers, and business leaders for decades. In a study published in Global Strategy Journal, together with my co-authors Adam Smith and William Judge, we think we took an important step towards understanding this competitiveness issue better. The first thing we need to do is define exactly what national competitiveness is. We argue that an economy is competitive when its businesses and citizens are more productive compared to other economies. Higher productivity earns a rising standard of living for the citizens of an economy. So why are some countries more productive than others? If you open a typical international business or global strategy textbook, you would likely encounter Michael Porter's very popular diamond model, which was originally advanced in 1990. Porter argued that four elements, graphically depicted as a diamond, collectively interact with each other to determine national competitiveness. First, factors of production such as physical, human, and financial resources available to companies provide the building blocks of productive activities. Porter argued that advanced factors such as knowledge and human capital are more important than basic factors, which is even more so the case in today's information-based global economy. The second element of the diamond model highlights a country's demand conditions. Porter argued that demanding consumers compel organizations to become more sophisticated and are thus conducive to high national competitiveness. The third element of the diamond model addresses the extent to which the nation possesses clusters of sophisticated supplier and related industries. Within these advanced clusters, firms can coordinate or share activities in the value chain develop complementary products, and enjoy knowledge spillovers. Finally, Porter observed that when domestic rivalry is fierce, the firms that survive often perform better in the global economy. This occurs because fierce competition pushes organizations to develop more effective strategies and renew productive capabilities to remain competitive. Taken together, these four elements make up Porter's diamond his recipe for increasing competitiveness. After observing the global economy, however, we thought that this recipe might be missing a couple of pretty important ingredients. This is particularly true since the global economy of 2015 is so remarkably different than that of the mid-1980s when the model was originally formulated. First, foreign companies can change the domestic economic landscape and provide different resources and capabilities, as well as use them differently than can domestic firms. At the same time, foreign companies can actually limit productivity growth or benefit local productivity only if other elements that increase absorptive capacity are present. This new reality makes it important to consider inward M&E penetration in combination with the diamond model. Second, in Porter's original formulation, Governmental institutions affect the four diamond elements, but they do not have a direct impact on national competitiveness. We thought that it was important to put governance quality in the foreground because it can serve to directly reduce economic costs and generate economic benefits that are distinct from the diamond model. For instance, corruption reduces productivity because rather than innovation and production, talent and effort will be allocated to rent-seeking activities. Corporate political behavior is often necessary, yet developing political capabilities is a cost imposed upon organizations as resources could have been otherwise allocated to productivity-enhancing activities. In sum, a more complete model of national competitiveness calls for the incorporation of m and &E penetration and governance quality, which may interact with elements of the diamond model. To test such a model, we use data from a wide variety of sources for 90 nations, representing over 97% of world GDP in 2012, and a novel analytical technique called FSQCA. Our data and analysis reveal that four successful configurations of our revised and expanded diamond model led to, or were sufficient for, high national competitiveness. Let's look at each one. Configuration 1 contains three of the four elements of the diamond model. Only related and supporting industries is missing. Governance quality is part of this configuration as well. Configuration 2 contains two elements of the diamond model. 
factor conditions and context for rivalry, along with governance quality. In this configuration, low m and &E penetration actually contributes to high national competitiveness. Configuration 3 contains three of the four components of the diamond model. Here, related and supporting industries replaces demand conditions from configuration 1. Configuration 3 also contains high governance quality. Finally, configuration 4 contains two of the elements of the diamond model, demand conditions and context for rivalry. In addition, it contains low m and &E penetration and high governance quality. Interestingly, context for rivalry and governance quality are present in each of the four identified configurations, indicating their centrality in achieving high national competitiveness. However, these two elements by themselves are not sufficient for high national competitiveness. Instead, they must be complemented by other elements within the diamond model. So what does all of this mean? First, it appears that a strong diamond in all four elements is not required for high national competitiveness. As a result, policymakers can assess the current diamond configuration and pursue the path that best fits their nation's condition. Second, governance quality deserves a more direct and central role within the diamond model. Firms in countries with effective public governance that help safeguard the future can establish organizational boundaries according to learning and innovation rather than using time and resources to deal with transaction cost considerations. Third, we found that low levels of m and &E penetration can in some configurations contribute to national competitiveness. Still, some nations in our data have been able to reach high levels of national competitiveness with high m and &E penetration. So the role of m and &E's is not straightforward in all contexts. While it might be tempting to assume that m and &E penetration has driven growth in places like Singapore, our analysis indicates that well-developed elements of the diamond coupled with high governance quality may have been the primary drivers of gains from foreign investment. To conclude, it seems that Porter's diamond model may require some refinement to work better in today's global economy. Yet, as Confucius once said, better a diamond with a flaw than a pebble without.